breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Glitter Boys. So, this is a special request episode of The Glitter Boys. Uh... You know, we often, like every single episode, mention come on into the Discord, join the community, talk, share, and ask questions. And this one is in specific answering a question put thrown at us by Do We Still Need Usernames? Who is asking how to level up under the Palladium system. Now, I don't quite remember. He, I believe they did mention that it was a Rifts game but I'm not 100% on that. So we're going to approach the subject broadly and uh, more all over the place as far as the Palladium Megaverse is concerned. Yeah, I was reaching for a book a minute ago to have some visual references that I could, you know, tap at as if as if you could see me doing this, you know, uh, that <laughs> I could they tap at and and follow along in my own, my own mental flow. And I was like, oh, I was immediately reaching for rifts. But then it's like, man, I always grab the Rifts book for this stuff. Let's just do something different. So today, I'm using Nightbane. Leveling up in Palladium is strangely not really defined. <laughs> so <laughs> there's all of this strangely. detail <laughs> yeah. that gets repeated ad infinitum to in all of their books about XP and the Palladium experience system and how experience is its own reward and so on. And you know, to a large extent, I do actually agree with a lot of that because experience is not just points. It's learning about the game in the episode that we just recorded, but are probably going to release after this one. We were talking about an adventure that is based heavily upon exploration and interaction with the world. And a lot of that is going to be using player experience mm -hmm. more so than character experience. So, yes, experience, learning how to be a better player is its own reward. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to get your character more power. <laughs> so we're here to apply those points. So what you do, and the very basis of it all, is find where you first found your character and go to the experience tables area. So in Nightbane, the experience tables area is, well, okay. Once again, different Palladium books do this differently. Some list the experience with the class. Some list the experience before the classes. And there was a period of time where they were frequently putting the experience tables at the very back of the book. Nightbane is one of those. So we're going to work with the only class that should exist in Nightbane, <laughs> the Nightbane. <laughs> and on page 233, the Nightbane, let's say that you are a level one Nightbane. And you have just gotten 2,400 experience points guess what? You're still level one. You need to get 2,401. <laughs> then you're level two. So go out and stab a goblin or something. Have a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good idea. Use a skill. By default, the Palladium role-playing system experience rules grant you 25 XP every time you use a skill, whether or not it is successful. Yeah. Many people forget that. And skills are honestly the first thing you, you, you do when you level up. Find your class, and the easiest thing to start with is your skills. Agreed. Because they're laid out pretty simply. When you are looking at the OCC table that Matthew has directed you to seek out in your book, uh, you find your class, you start reading it, and it will have a spot that says your OCC skills. And then right after that, it says your, depending upon the book, other skills or OCC-related skills. And it'll say, you get X at level one, then one or two more at levels five, seven, 12, and 14 or something. The Nightbane, for example, if you're going with the, night, the basic Nightbane skill package, you have RCC-related skills. You get 10 at level one, then two additional skills at level two, and then some more later. But we're only focused on level two right now. 
So you just made level two. Congratulations. You get two more skills picked as you picked those first 10. Same list, same bonuses, same restrictions. Next, I would recommend going over to your hand to hand. Oh, yeah. You're, 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 you're fighting. Especially consider that hand to hand is usually either an OCC skill or one of your, I still call them electives because I'm, I'm a fantasy first edition guy, but you're OCC related or your other skills and find that next level <laughs> and apply yeah. those numbers. So before we move on to the rest of the skills that you're going to be getting, you should know how to apply those numbers with the hand to hand combat system. For example, well, let's pull it up at Nightbane, We're flipping back here. We're looking at hand to hand. Let's just go with hand to hand expert, the most common. It's cumulative, not replacing. So at level one, it says you have two attacks per melee and plus two to roll and pull a punch. Well, later on, you're going to get a bonus to roll and pull a punch, but it doesn't replace it. It adds to it. And this should be apparent by the way it says one additional attack per melee at level four. That means you're going to raise those numbers up. Um, there's going to be a lot of manual looking back and forth across your character sheet to find where you've written all these numbers down. But once you get a few levels under your belt, it kind of becomes second nature. Yeah. The other thing about skills is, aside from the hand-to-hand -hand skills, your regular skills will go up by a percentage. So you might have a skill that's a base of 25% plus 5 per level. Well, all of your skills that have percentages are going to do that. So you're going to need to go down the line and add those bonuses in. Most skills are plus 5%, but some of them are plus 4% or plus 2%. You'll have to manually make the change on your character sheet. Unless it's a secondary skill. Secondary <laughs> skills which, also go up. They go up. Which, which is the one that doesn't? They all do. They all do. The only ones that don't are most of the basic physical skills. You get them, they give you a thing, and you're done. There mm. are a couple oddball cases, and I want to say, I can't remember which real system. No, I'm not even going to say it because I know I'm wrong. The um, reason... The fact that we're even questioning this is a good reason why this needs to be discussed. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it can be very confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, secondary skills, at least in the more recent versions of the game, secondary skills, they do go up as well as your normal skills. The only difference is you don't get the starting bonus to them that you might have gotten had you picked that skill as an OCC or an OCC related skill. Okay. You are right. Um, words from the text are the character also gets to select X amount of secondary skills from the previous list. These are additional areas of knowledge that do not get the advantage of the bonus list in the parentheses. All secondary skills start at the base skill level, but they do progress from there. Yeah. So yes, sorry, my bad, my dumb. Now it gets more complicated. You really do need to reference your OCC description in the book because not every class gets more skills in certain areas. Mm -hmm. I had forgotten this. My entire last 30 years of gaming, I had forgotten <laughs> that some of the classes don't get more. So this project that I've been doing where I'm converting a lot of the OCCs into a spreadsheet trying to figure out, you know, how to have it automatically calculate certain stuff by levels. And suddenly I'm like, this character gets six skills and no more. Oh, but they get secondary skills every level. Or another character will get skills every level and another one will get mm -hmm. none. And you're like, okay, there's, uh, there's a lot of differences or a lot of discrepancies. So, And even there are odd levels too for some of them. Or oddly specific no level, yeah. <laughs> like level three One, and four, 11. seven. <laughs> you know, yeah, you have to go back and check your class description just to make sure. The good news is that most of it is there. Pretty much everything you need to do is there. It just doesn't have instructions on how to do it. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you have special abilities, spells and things of that nature, you're also going to want to look and see what changes on that as as you level up 
uh, sometimes range, mm -hmm. sometimes damage, sometimes just the saves. Well, if you have special abilities, oftentimes they'll have a percentage, and those percentages mm -hmm. also go up X per level. Dog boys. <laughs> Dog boys have so many special abilities that are percentage based, and they go up every level, not always at the same amount. Mm -hmm. And you know, you play a dog boy, you have a list of percentages on your sheet that is impressive. If you're playing someone who uses mind magic or is a psychic, is a wizard, does anything outside of basic combat, you're also going to want to look in that area if it's not covered in your character sheet, not only for your <clears throat> spell level progression, how many you get, but sometimes saves will be in that table as well. Um, which will which will change, um, and the number of spells you get a day will change, and that's usually on or near that table. Increasing the PPE and the ISP is something that is easy to forget. Yep. Again, yeah. if you have those things, you should have it written down on your sheet already, but in case you haven't, go back to the OCC on the racial description where you got those powers and make a note of your X per level. Another thing you should keep in mind is what your character has gone through uh, in this past level. Because Palladium has something that no one else does. Uh, I believe the, uh, the affectionate term is, this is what makes it metal as fuck. Uh, and that would be the, the insanity <laughs> tables. What oh. have you survived? Well, it's funny you say that because there actually are OCCs that give you insanities as you level mm -hmm. up. I can think of one in the Core Rifts book, The Crazy. Mm -hmm. You just get mm -hmm. more. Yep. yep. And so that leads us to the next part, which is... Your OCC will have a list of things that all come before the attribute requirements in the book. The OCCs largely follow the same structure, and you can generally expect that once it hits the line that has attribute requirements, now it's all business. Mm -hmm. That's where you have your skills. That's where you have your skill raising that's where you have your mm -hmm. gear kind of thing this is all business from this point forward everything before that though who knows it could be fluff it could be crunch <laughs> mm -hmm. and if it's crunch you might get something like has a plus one to save versus magic at levels three seven and thing mm -hmm. this is where it becomes up to you dear listener to Power that OCC description for any and all references to X per level or at levels X and apply that. There is a minimalism trend, which is probably healthy in a number of ways. Uh, nice, cool rooms with glass tops. Riffs is not going to help you with that, though. You need <laughs> post-it notes. <laughs> you need all manner of things to keep this going. Your book macro should be marked up. Yeah. Macro enabled spreadsheets. <laughs> you know, Matthew, I think you might have been joking with that, but one of the players in our Saturday game <laughs> is basically the whole time we're playing, writing up little post-it notes and sticking them on the table in front of them. It's wonderful. <laughs> I have in my role-playing shelf behind us, I don't know if you can actually see it, Mm -hmm. But those things on the top there where my head is, those are those all little gray notes? things. Those are post-it notes and spare pencils and erasers for people to hand to each other or and or stick in their books. Yeah. Having a stack of those right next to the mm -hmm. gaming table is crucial. Yeah. Okay. Are we missing anything? No. And I just want to say you can, uh, there's about a 10 year life before it starts hurting your book. So keep that in mind. Oh, the post-it note? Yeah. Okay. The, the glue will eventually bond. Oh, read your powers section for your character very carefully because there are a whole bunch of OCCs out there where your powers change in very subtle ways and it's only mentioned in one throwaway line in the powers text. Mm -hmm. uh, this is especially true of uh, like first edition Beyond the Supernatural uh, where a couple of the characters get like range bumps on their powers that are in one th throwaway line in the second paragraph of the power description. And it's the only place it's listed. And you need to know in advance when you have selected your class at its first level of experience, you need to know that you should read your powers list before even getting to that point 
because you might be expecting to gain more powers and then suddenly find out you don't. Mm -hmm. First edition wizard, looking at you. You don't get more spells. You have to find them. Mm -hmm. there so there's all these things out there that you might be used to in another game like oh yeah yeah wizard always gets a new spell every level negative ghost rider (laughs) (laughs) yeah and knowledge keeps running away for its life it doesn't want to be stuffed in the cauldron what the fuck oh hit points (laughs) 1d6 additional hit points is the standard Mm. however your race or rcc might have it differently Oh, God damn, I forgot about RCC. So age. Um, sometimes when you're running an RCC, such as, um, let's just go with the dragon. Age actually does play a factor much like experience. So yeah, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, just pour over what you can do, yeah. pour over what's available, and then get to know your OCC or your RCC. I would strongly recommend that if you are playing in a classic group, And by classic group, I mean you have an entire gaming group and there's one copy of the rules like we used to, and it worked just fine for years. If you're playing in that kind of group, photocopy the character class and staple it to your character sheet. That way you don't have to constantly keep reaching for the book in order to reference your stuff. And once you have that photocopy, Take a highlighter and Mm -hmm. highlight the things that you're going to need to do when you level up. So look for each and every one of those things that says per level or at levels X, Y, and Z and take, take a highlighter and make it a different colored one. Get like a pink one or a green one. Highlight those spots so that they will be more immediate for you to see. So when you ding, level up, flip over, bam, 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 done. I know I've been doing this for a long time, but even by the point that I was 17, I could make Palladium characters in 10 minutes and I could level them up in like two or three. The really, 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 the the biggest obstacle, the biggest gotcha is the math. Mm -hmm. All those percentages that you're going to have to just pop another 5% into. Or in earlier versions of the palladium books where the percentage was not necessarily uniform and you from had skill to, to skill yeah. some were four table. some were three mm. some were five mm. and that's actually another reason why i always hearken back to character classes like the hatchling dragon as great for starting players because they have so few percentages that they have to write down yeah their whole thing is a lot of hit points a lot of mega damage and you know, just go forth and fuck shit up. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to figure out a way to streamline. So, cause we just vomited a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> under this poor question. So I, I would say start at your OCC. If you yeah. have extra credit, go there like as your third step, go OCC hand to hand and then your other stuff. So you would, you would recommend doing it before your skills. OCC will give you the information on your skills where where you get them, what they go up each level. So, mm-hmm. I yeah, mean, I, I can see that. Yeah. Or as we say, run the OCC. So go back to your yeah. class and go to point one and just follow it all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. Look for anything that has, again, anything that you've highlighted on that sheet that I just told you to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the best way I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Most of it's going to be there. I would say that the only real gotchas, the only ones that are easy to forget because they're not in the OCC would be hit points. Mm-hmm. ISP, if you got it outside of your class, like if you were one of those lucky few with a random psionics role, mm-hmm. that will require you to either have written down and know how much you're going to get every level or go back and check the psionics rules section of your whatever rule book is relevant. Mm. And don't forget about those insanities. Again, insanities are only going to happen if your class says it or if your GM specifically says, oh, by the way, roll on insanity. So, but it, it, it adds so much to the game. Like, I, I personally would just be checking in on those insanities because it's fun. Okay, I have a challenge. <laughs> I have a challenge to our listeners. I want you to start a game, get your group together, pick, pick, a, pick a Palladium game. It's up to you. And then you have a house rule. And every time a character levels up, they have to randomly get an insanity. I want you to play that for eight levels and then write me a campaign report. 
Because <laughs> that's going to be either really, really fucked up or really fucking hilarious. It's It, it can be both. <laughs> I mean, hopefully this helps. I, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't think there's anything else. Yeah. No, it's it's hard, too, because there's there's a breadth of things. Like, uh, what, what recon is is different than oh. what is... Uh, you know, what is the Palladium RPG? What is Rifts? What is, yeah. you know. I, I mean, yeah. Whenever we're talking about something like this, Recon is its own weird yeah. animal, completely different yeah. character mm-hmm. creation system, different stats structure. You know, it's it's a it's its own ball game. I have been spoiled by more recent RPGs that will actually have flow charts of every step, including leveling up. And it's really nice to have those. I'm also used to the Palladium way of doing it. And in that, with that way, generally, you will have written that stuff down already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like whenever I write down, I gained a new skill, I write down how much the base is. I go ahead and factor in all of my modifiers. And then to the right of it, I write plus 5% slash level mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And when I do my hit points, no, I, I, I will pay. I will actually literally write plus one d six slash level. If my ISP plus ten slash level or something. Chances are that if you've been doing that yourself, then you've really got everything that you need there. Yeah. Now though, I am. I'm thinking there could be a deeper implication to this question, which is, when do you level up? Do you level up immediately upon getting the XP, or? Do you have to go back to town and rest a bit? Or do you need some training? I mean, so many old school games did it differently. And which means that's something you're going to have to ask your GM. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's very style on their point. Like, <clears throat> real world, sometimes you have to sit on these things for, for things to be understood. Mm-hmm. Real world, sometimes you figure it out in the middle of the tumble across the gravel. You know, it's it's weird how fast you learn how to drive when you're skidding on the ice. Yeah. Um, so there's arguments to be made for both ways. Yeah. I mean, real world, sometimes it requires years of therapy. Yeah. <laughs> and a roll on the insanity table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, way to bring it back. Uh. <laughs> As someone who just had to roll on the insanity table last Saturday <laughs> because uh, NPCs run of luck at killing or nearly yeah. killing my characters still holds <laughs> i have these sharp wonderful dice that i got um I, I forget they're a special type of die i don't remember what they were called but i got them at a convention and they're wonderful in interesting ways and i would say that about half the time they roll anywhere between a one and a four and the other half of the time they roll a 20 <laughs> it's just a, it's my i call it my murder die it murders you or it murders me <laughs> your dice and my dice were collaborating mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah he went down to zero and went under and it's like yeah roll for a, you know roll for a death after effect and he got a random insanity and he got what uh manic depression yep yeah. I, I i now have a permanent limp and manic depression mm-hmm. yeah yeah, that's also one of those things that uh, you'll want to make a big note of if you're playing in any of the systems, which only the really earlier ones had um, wounding mechanics for going down yeah. super low. But if you have that, it's it's good to make sure that you have it called out clearly on your character sheet where this modifier is coming from, because some of them radically can change your character character and you know it what character creation is the point where those situational because x happened to you y is now a permanent effect and you're doing character creation and you look at it and go the math on this skill is totally off and if you don't have it marked down that oh i had a traumatic head injury so all of my intellect based skills are now minus 15 is <laughs> is right. a good thing to have a record of Yep. All right. Fuck, I'm trying to remember. Is there, is there an age mechanic anywhere for the norms? Not normally. Yeah. Yeah. No. Not, I mean, unless you're playing with some custom rules or something, it, it's okay. not really a, a base mechanic. 
there are a s specific set of edge cases for that. Uh, I believe, but don't quote me on this. Uh, Mystic China has it. Um, just because, I remember seeing some. Yeah, yeah. My Mystic China, I believe, has it, but that's because the wizened old man who has yeah. massive chi abilities uh, or is a Taoist master, <laughs> you know, is a common trope. So they had to factor that in. So, okay. um, it, but no, it's not particularly common. Hmm. Well, I hope this helped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was something that we kind of preformed, but I think we got it right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you have follow up questions, if you have any other questions, come on over to Discord. You know, we love fielding questions like this. Some of them we can answer right in the Discord. But if we think it's a makes a good topic and involves a talk through and exploration or possibly difference of opinion, we would love to have you throw them at us. Just come on over to the Breakfast Puppies Discord, hop in the Glitter Boys chat, introduce yourself around, check to make sure the question hasn't been asked before. If you can't find it quickly, feel free to field it. We're not the only ones who answer questions. The community itself, like, as we're recording this, there's a lively debate about how to convert pe uh, characters from one setting to another mm -hmm. going on, and it's great to see. It's funny that you mentioned that, because as we started the opening lines of discussing the, our topic for this episode, going that on question right popped up. I just watched it go on, and my brain was like, I wonder if I can answer that one in another... <laughs> we could do another one, a special one. But it looks like our form goers have stepped up to the ball. Yeah. Or stepped up to the bat. Yeah. Stepped up, I'm getting my idioms mixed up. Yep. Stepped up to the plate. Stepped up to the plate. There we go. Anyways. That's thanks all again. I got. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. For... Bye, everybody. Yeah. So end it there. <laughs> Leave out. that in. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. You leave all kinds of idiot shit I put in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you can keep that. Starships, magic, mystic martial arts, romance. All of these can be found in A Cloak of Blades by Isaac Sher. You might have heard my name before. I've done a lot of voiceover work for Breakfast Puppies. And I've recently released my first novel. It's available on Amazon as an ebook and paperback. And you can get it for free if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. I do hope you'll support my work as you're supporting Breakfast Puppies. And it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Have a good one. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, The Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time.